It's another cold morning. In fact, it's a Gore-Tex morning. Gore-Tex jacket. Gore-Tex boots. We have actually two gloves. This is a, a glove liner that you're seeing right now. And it cuts the wind. It's worth the money. Hey, second community. This is Steve Grusis, the Cycling Greek. And this is the 10th day of my 10 day block. We'll talk about what my 10 day blocks used to be like and what they are now. Even though this is the 10th day of my 10 day block, I was not riding all the 10 days, but I'll be talking about that in a bit. The day before, I did a Zwift race, and you can see that in episode 5. Natalia, she went skiing all day yesterday, so each of us are feeling it in our legs in different ways. The plan for today was endurance, and because of how I was feeling, and I would imagine how uh, Natalia was feeling, I picked a mostly flat course. Now, there's some small climbs on this. However, each of those climbs range from 3 to 8 minutes, and we took the climbs not at endurance, it was more like an upper tempo, a little bit into threshold, but we kept it steady except for one that we raced, and that's this one right here. The reason for this race up this four minute climb was I wanted to see how Natalia was going to do. This was about the 45 mile mark for me and my legs had already started to loosen up, so I was feeling pretty good. And Natalia wasn't feeling that bad from the skiing, just a little extra stress on her calves. She was actually riding quite well. As soon as it got a little steeper, I punch it. She right away gets on my wheel. Now, I'm focusing on punching it and I'm not even looking in back of me, so I only see now what's actually happened. Actually, a few seconds later, I kind of figured it out. This part gets steeper fast, and that means I'm starting to put out more and more wattage. Now, when I punched it, I made sure that I didn't go into red line, that I could dial back just a bit and then hold it the rest of the way. By doing that, I was hoping to hold Natalia at bay. As it got steeper, my confidence in my little plan started to wane. Because of the increasing gradient, I was starting to slow just a little bit, and I certainly couldn't put any more power up because then I would go into a red line. Natalia then just slowly scooted past me. Right after that, my Garmin Verb ran out of battery power, and I just happened to look down and during my hypoxia, I figured, you know, I better turn on the one on my head. So I turned on my GoPro, and so that's what we're looking at now. This is about the three minute mark. I was gaining a little time on her when it got a little more shallower, but now it's gotten steeper, and uh, she's going back out again. And right around the corner is going to be the finish. I'm putting everything I can. I know I'm not going to win this little race that we're doing, so now I'm just trying to cut the loss as much as I can. Looking up ahead, you can see where it starts to curve to the left. There's a little cement driveway right before that, or right in the middle of that, and that's where the finish is. So how it ended up is she finished 15 seconds in front of me. Now, she did about 128% of her FTP, and I did 118% of my FTP. Man, she has a good engine. Good job. Oh, man. You did great. As I started to head back, my thoughts turned toward my upcoming training block, which is going to focus on VO2 max work, and the extra motivation I just developed for that. Let's jump to this X-Block format. It used to be, when I was a much younger cycling Greek before my AFib, that I was into stage races, and my favorite one was Tour de Gila in New Mexico. I would take that 10 days and cut it into two blocks, a four-day block, two days of rest, and another four-day block. That format of training is one of the things I had to give up once I acquired AFib. After that effort, our ride back to the split-off point was a little more muted. Once we split off, I had about another 15 miles to go, and when I got home, I was pretty tired. And I'm taking this week off. The Cycling Greek.